Hello and welcome to this ASMS tutorial on using Microsoft Excel to draw a graph between dependent and independent variables. For this tutorial we're using some data for throwing a ball straight up in the air and measuring the height and velocity of that ball after each uh, 0.5 second interval. To start with we take our data and we make sure that it's arranged appropriately. So in this case we need to make sure that our independent variable is in the left hand column as we have here for time and our dependent variable or variables are lined up accordingly uh, to the right of that. We can change it around later on if we have it mixed up any other way, but it makes it easy to start off with the independent variable arranged on the left. We then select all our data. We go to Insert. Now, I'm using Microsoft Excel 2010. The earlier versions have a similar thing. They just have it laid out slightly differently. So you need to go Insert a chart. Now, the charts we have here, column, line, pie, bar, area, and scatter, and other charts. The one we use mostly for science charts are scatter. That allows us to um, compare the independent variable on the horizontal axis or the x-axis and the dependent variables on the y-axis. So we go to the scatter plots and the one we want to use to start with just draws the points. We don't want to we don't want Excel drawing any lines for us at this stage. So we pick our Excel points there and there we can see I'll just move it down here. We have each point for both our columns height measured in blue and the velocity measured in red Plotted up against time here, measured across from 0 up to 4 seconds, with the largest point being at 3.5 seconds, which is what we have in our data table. Now the first thing we see from this graph is that the velocity not only is a different unit to height, but it also covers a different range. So what we might want to do is measure that across on a different axis. So let's set ourselves up with a secondary axis across to the right. So we'll right click on the data set for velocity, go to Format Data Series, and you see here under the first option here, Series Options, at the moment it's plotted on the primary axis, which is by default what everything is plotted on to start with. Uh, we can switch that across to a secondary axis. As you can see there, it's brought up a secondary axis, and now the height data, the primary axis is only pl plotting the height data, and is therefore able to span a more logical spread there without having it squashed all up in the top half. We then click OK. And we can see there already we've got ourselves an improvement. Now, once we've got ourselves the, the data plotted on an appropriate axis, what we can do is draw ourselves some trend lines. So let's go, let's start with the velocity graph. So again, we'll select it, right click it. Now this time around, we want to select add trend line. And we can see we've got a range of options here for the type of curve to fit. Now, velocity we expect to be approximately linear because we have constant, constant acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. So we expect that any variation from that line is probably due to experimental error rather than an error in the line itself. We could fit a polynomial to it and if we make it nice and high order we could get something that will fit every point but as you can see the wobbly line is probably not representative of what actually happens when you throw a ball in the air. So the linear option is much better for us. We can then see a couple more options down here. We can display the equation on the chart so we can make sure we can use that later on if we want to model how that velocity varies with time. And we can also display the R squared value. The R squared value is a measure of how well the line represents the points. So we can see there that uh, 0.9981 is pretty close to 1 and that represents a very good fit. If it was closer to 0 it would represent a worse fit. We'll leave that displayed for now. And we can do the same thing with the height data. Now the height data of course is not linear so when we add that trend line we're probably going to want to use, instead of a polynomial, instead of a linear, sorry, we're going to use a polynomial fit. And we expect that as the, uh, under a constant acceleration, we're going to expect to see an approximately quadratic curve there. So we'll leave it as a second order polynomial, which is a quadratic. And then we will display the equation on the chart and the R squared value. Now I'm just going to move those up and out of the way there a little bit. And we'll go back to the curve. Okay, so now what we can also do here, because we expect that this, uh, the ball was launched at zero seconds, at which point it had zero height, we can force the curve to go through zero, zero. That's an option you can choose or not choose. Once we've set our two trend lines, we then hit close. Now, you can choose to leave these equations on your curve, or you can just note down the equations and then delete them. It makes no difference. So we can go on there, I'm just going to delete them just to make the graph look a little neater. And then over here, we don't need to independently show what those lines are, so we'll just delete those as well. Of course, that doesn't delete the line itself, just the indicator as to what the line represents. 
here we have a curve for both height and velocity measured on different axes showing the movement over time we can see that as time goes on the height goes up and then comes back down and the velocity starts off high moves down through zero and then becomes more and more negative that's how we draw a basic graph the next video will show how to clean the graph up and put labels and all the other nice little bits on it that we need in order to make it valid for a scientific report